This podcast is for AP Biology for Chapter 3. This is the first podcast covering carbon, functional groups, and carbohydrates. Um, first off, we're going to give some characteristics of carbon. Um, carbon is very abundant. You can find it everywhere. It is neither strongly electronegative nor positive. Um, it has four valence electrons, so it can share those four electrons and form four covalent bonds with four other atoms. Um, those bonds can be single covalent bonds, double covalent bonds, or triple covalent bonds. Um, they interact, because of that, they interact with many other atoms. And because of that, they make a great variety of molecules. They can form straight chains or branch chains, or they can form ring structures. And so this diversity of um, what they can do provides us with a diversity of biomolecules, which is what this chapter is about. Lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. Okay, um, we talked about double bonds, double covalent bonds. Um, two double bonds will connect for carbon dioxide. The oxygens will connect on each side, and it's, it makes the molecule linear. And because it is linear, the oxygen atoms are pulling those electrons in a linear manner. And so carbon dioxide as a whole is going to be nonpolar. Okay. Um, covalent carbon-carbon bonds, um, we said can be single, single bonds as shown right here. Can be double bonds, which looks like an equal sign, as in right here. Or can be triple bonds, as shown right here. Okay. Um, all of these examples, and this is figure 3.1 in your book, are hydrocarbons. A hydrocarbon is defined as having only carbon and hydrogen. And the characteristic of that is that they are hydrophobic, which means they are, do not mix, do not like water. So as you can see, all of these, these are um, shorter ones. See the ring structure they can form right here? But all of these are hydrocarbons, very strict ones as well. And branching, as we mentioned earlier. Okay, um, there are important functional groups that you need to know. Um, they confer, there are special properties that you would find on a carbon chain. Um, and if you change any one of them, it's going to change their chemical properties. For example, if you have a hydrophobic molecule, as I just showed you, and you change one of their functional groups, it can become hydrophilic, which means it would be water soluble and love water. Some common functional groups that you need to know and memorize. Functional group number one is the alcohol group, and we call this the hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl group is characterized by having a bond O oxygen with a hydrogen. OH is hydroxyl group. Another one is the carbonyl group. All carbonyl groups have a carbon double bonded to oxygen, and then it can be of two types. It can be an aldehyde, which means it has a hydrogen bonded to the carbon, or it can have an R group bonded to the carbon. An R group refers to a radical, and that can be anything. Any kind of carbon chain, it can be really long, it can be really short. So an R group is any other molecule. Um, the only difference between the aldehyde and the ketone then is that the aldehyde means that that R group is an H, a hydrogen, and in a ketone it can be anything but an H. The next common functional group that you will see a lot is carboxyl group. A carboxyl group is a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen. It has a hydroxyl group on the other bond and an R. So this R can be anything. Another one is the amino group. The amino group is easy to recognize because it's the only one that we're going to talk about that has a nitrogen group. The nitrogen group has two hydrogens bonded to it and another some type of chain right there. Another functional group is the methyl group, and that is a carbon bonded to three hydrogens, CH3 for short. And the last functional group that you need to know is the phosphate group. It is the only group that has a phosphorus, and notice there are five bonds for a phosphorus. One of them is a double bonded to oxygen, two of them are hydroxyl groups, and the other one is an oxygen that's bonded to an R group. So these are functional groups, and you need to memorize them. Oh, I forgot about the sulfhydro group, sorry. That is a group that has sulfur, a hydrogen bonded to it, and then an R group. Okay. All right, a term you need to understand is a polymer. A polymer 
um, is a very large molecule that's made up of smaller molecules. So a polymer is a big molecule made up of the same kind of smaller molecules. The small molecules are called monomers. So in this picture, this is the monomer, and that makes up, repeatingly, the big polymer. They are linked together by uniform bonds. So they might be linked together by all by covalent bonds, for example. Okay, um, there are two types of reactions that we're going to look at. The first one is called dehydration synthesis. Another name you might have heard of for dehydration synthesis is condensation. And this usually will put monomers together. Um, for dehydration synthesis, it literally means removing of water to build. When something condenses or has condensation, it lost water. So here is a glucose molecule, and here is a glucose molecule. It doesn't matter what molecule we're talking about. But the OH here and this hydrogen here is going to break off and form the bond between these two molecules. So we're making a polymer by linking these two monomers together. Um, the opposite reaction is hydrolysis. When polymers are taken apart, they are hydrolyzed. Hydrolysis means to break by adding water. So here is our bigger molecule here. We're going to break that bond by adding water to it. And as you can see, the water is added right here. One of the molecules will get the hydroxyl group. The other molecule will get the, the hydrogen. And now we have two separate molecules or monomers. Okay, so condensation builds molecules by removing a molecule of water from each pair of monomer subunits. And hydrolysis is the opposite, and that would be adding water to make the monomers. So they're exact opposite processes. Okay. Okay, the last topic for this podcast are carbohydrates. A carbohydrate is basically a sugar. We're gonna, you need to know what they are composed of and characteristics of them. Carbohydrate, that term means carbon, which you see from the carbo, plus water, which is hydrate, hydrated carbon. It has a ratio, all carbohydrates have this ratio of one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. It usually looks like hexose or pentose rings. Sugars have a carbon backbone held with carbon-carbon bonds. One of the carbons is a carbonyl, which means that you will see a carbonyl group, a carbon bonded to an oxygen in all sugars. Most of the remaining carbons will have a hydroxyl group attached to them. Um, as you've seen or learned in regular biology, simple carbohydrates are found in foods such as fruits, milk, and vegetables. Okay, there are three groups of carbohydrates. First one is monosaccharides. Saccharides means sugar. Mono means simple or one. Disaccharides. Di means two. So those are two monosaccharides that are joined together by a covalent bond. And then you have polysaccharides, which means many or more than two monosaccharides bonded together by a covalent bond. First one we're going to talk about are monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are simple sugars. They can be broken down or oxidized to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy. That process we will learn later on in Chapter 7 as cellular respiration. The most common monosaccharide that you need to be familiar with is glucose, C6H12O6. Notice it is a carbohydrate because it is in the ratio of one carbon to double hydrogens to one oxygen in that ratio. Glucose can be written out in a straight form. And if you counted up all of these carbons, you would have six. You counted up all the hydrogens, you would have 12 and six oxygens. In the earlier description of a carbohydrate, we said there would always be a carbonyl group, which is right here. And all the other carbons will be bonded to a hydroxyl group. Okay? There's different arrangements that it can be written in. When you look at a carbohydrate, you, you number the carbons. And usually it's numbered from here, like if it was in a ring form, one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth one is off of the, the ring. Okay? All right. There are two forms of glucose, alpha glucose and beta glucose. As you look at it, the only difference is where the hydroxyl group is oriented. And that's all that makes a difference. The alpha glucose has a hydroxyl group pointing downward, where the beta glucose has the hydroxyl group pointing upward. You need to recognize this. These are all um, monosaccharides here. 
Monosaccharides can have three carbon sugars, so there's only three of them here. Um, and these are examples. You don't need to memorize this chart, but just be able to recognize when you see a mono mono monosaccharide. Sorry. They also can be five carbon sugars. These sugars you will be familiar with eventually, ribose and deoxyribose. Or they can be six carbon sugars, like glucose, fructose, and galactose. All right, moving on to disaccharides. Remember, a disaccharide is two monosaccharides joined together by a covalent bond. The bond that forms them together is, has a special name. It's called a glycosidic linkage. There are three main disaccharides for you to be familiar with and how they're made up of, what they're made up of. Glucose plus a glucose is maltose, and that's the sugar that's in malt beverages. Glucose plus fructose is sucrose, and that's table sugar. And then glucose plus galactose is lactose, and that's the sugar in milk. So each, ones of the, each one of these are all monosaccharides. You put two of them together, we get a disaccharide. The bond between these is called a glycosidic linkage. All right, so remember, if you take the water away, that's how disaccharides are made. So here is glucose, and here's a glucose. You take this water molecule away and form the bond. This is your glycosidic linkage bond, and then you have a water molecule left over. So glucose plus glucose, this is maltose. Glucose plus fructose, this is sucrose. So you need to be able to recognize right here that that is a disaccharide, and you need to know the name of the bond, glycosidic linkage. Remember, you can take it apart. If you do hydrolysis, you add water, you can take maltose and break it down into glucose and glucose. You're just putting the water back in. Same thing for breaking down sucrose into glucose and fructose. The last group of um, carbohydrates were polysaccharides, and these were many monosaccharides bonded together. There are four main types. First one is cellulose, second one is starch, third one glycogen, fourth one chitin. And once we go through each, each of those, we are done with this podcast. First one is cellulose. Here is a diagram, 3.10 um, B, of the of cellulose and what it looks like. It is a structural carbohydrate. It is what is in the cell walls of plants. And as you can see in the picture, you should be able to recognize, it is a bunch of beta-glucose units all linked together in a very straight chain. It is very strong. A lot of animals can't digest it. It is indigestible by nearly all organisms. So if we eat any, any kinds of plants, that is fiber, and that's what you excrete out. Um, it is the most common carbohydrate or polysaccharide. It is very linear, and there is no branching. So if I gave you a picture of this, you should recognize that these are glucoses. It's linear. That should give you the hint that it's cellulose, and you also need to know that it is beta glucose units making it up. The second polysaccharide was starch. Notice the difference. It has branches all over the place, okay? Um, it is made of alpha glucose, so it's a little bit different. Um, it is a storage molecule in plants. Plants store starch, and it is in branched chains. Okay. The third polysaccharide is glycogen, and as you can see, it is branched as well. It is the same as starch, but it's more a little bit more branched. Um, it is a storage compound found in animals, and we find it in our liver and muscle cells specifically. And the last one is chitin. Chitin is completely different. It completely stands out compared to the other ones. As you can see, it is beta glucose, okay? But there is a amino group attached to it. See the nitrogen? Amino or amine means there's a nitrogen group. And so that's what makes it chitin. It is a very strong exoskeleton polymer of arthropods. It's what makes up their, um, their shell. Most animals cannot digest it, and otherwise it is linear, as you can see in the picture. And that completes our podcast for the first section of Chapter 3 for AP Biology.